What's up, everybody? Welcome to our last stream of 2020. Goodbye, 2020. Yes, you were a crap year. We've got a good year ahead of us. 21. I always like the name. The name. <laughs> the number 21. Blackjack sounds good to me. All right, let's see what we can do with it. We'll find out tomorrow. I am going to try to stream tomorrow morning. I'm not planning on getting a New Year's Eve hangover this year, being that I can't even go out. So we will have a stream tomorrow morning. Um, wouldn't be surprised if it was a little later than the normal schedule, but hopefully I'll get rolling by 11 a.m. First stream of the year tomorrow, Friday Blitz at 11 CET. Hopefully, if I'm not late. Astrobeat, thanks for resubscribing. Tier 3. Thank you, man. You're the best. VIP Acerbate. Thanks for GCS being a mod. Princess Chess. Good last day of 2020. Definitely. So. I'm in, in here for two and a half hours till nine o'clock. CET, we're doing our Thursday stream. It's kind of a subscriber stream. Um, I'm analyzing games, viewer games that were submitted. As most of you know, we missed last week due to Christmas holiday. So we didn't have a subscriber stream last week. I didn't want to like bail and, and have no stream two Thursdays in a row. So I've got submissions from Mr. Slow, Acerbate, Princess Chess, Yabatis. Whose subscription submissions didn't get to me? Did did Mule Skinner you submit a game? Did any other people submit games that I'm I'm not getting notifications um, a lot of times, it seems like from my Lee Chess messages. It seems I'm I'm unaware of people submitting games. Mr. Slowhand, just donated a thousand bits. Every everything will get better somehow. I was saying to Acerbate that I had three bad years in a row. So we're due for a good one. I hope I hope that's the case. It can always get better. It can always get worse. Hopefully it will get better. Mr. Slohan, thanks for generous donation and from Chess Smurf. Chess Smurf 64, 300 bits. Mr. Slohan, 1,000 bits. Ending the year with a bang. Thank you, guys. Alms donated 500, I guess, yesterday. Mr. Slohan has donated 2,234 this week. And Mr. Slohan, given a lot of support to the stream, I appreciate it. Um, we're going to start with his game first if you guys don't mind. So let me see. I should probably just search for Mr. Slow. There it is. Nice short attacking game. A nice short attacking game for your next subscriber. Subscriber analysis stream. Now that's from the 29th. That's correct. Strange play by opponents. Chessmer, thanks again for your 300 bit donation. Wernaki greetings. Is there room for a game of yours? Absolutely. We'll try to get in up to 10 subscriber games. I I don't have faith that I'm getting notified when people s send me messages. But I seem to get a lot of silly messages from people, but nothing important. None of the important messages from my friends, just, just random invites to random teams and tournaments. Alright. A nice shirt attacking game for your next subscriber analysis stream. Strange played by my opponent. We'll check it out. Here it comes. Pierzer. So it's a 3 0 game from <clears throat> I don't know where, two days ago. Mr. Slow playing white against Pierzer, who's 2306. Is everything good? Our audio, frame rate. Looks good. Ready to go. Alright, so Mr. Slow is white e4. I just looked at your game with Acerbate. That was a Sicilian g6. Mr. Slow plays different stuff though. He's playing the English a lot. Do you just play the English against me? Or is it is it my imagination or do you only play the English against me? What's up with that? 
Against other people, he plays e4 still. He used to play e4 against me, too. Um, he also plays different stuff against against the Sicilian, though. So e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. You're trying to learn the English, you mean. So now Ross Lima, I've never seen... I don't recall you playing the, the Ross Lima against me, Mr. Slow. It should be 5. I think of it as a positional system. Very, you know, closely tied to like Rubenstein, I mean Rubenstein, Nimzovich, whatever. Why do I get Rubenstein and Nimzovich mixed up? Completely like different players. Cheers everyone, it's New Year's Eve, need to loosen up a little bit here, have a party. But I'm always serious about chess, you know, no, ma <laughs> no matter how drunk I might get. I've never been drunk on the stream. Um, bishop b5, queen b6. You played a simul game against me in the Ross Limo? I have forgotten. I have reached 19,000 games on Lee Chess, and since none of, none of them are a bullet, um, that's, I think, a reasonable accomplishment. A lot of people have like 50,000 games on Lee Chess, but they're like mostly bullet games. I've played 19,000 Blitz or longer. Mostly Blitz. Very few 3-0s, too, so... So, queen b6, um, you know, this is a risky kind of variation that it reminds me of the classical Nimzo. Anytime you bring the queen out early, there's a danger, as in the classical Nimzo, that you, your development lags. When white plays queen c2 against the Nimzo, um, you know, he's got an extra move. Being white is a big difference from being black. If you're playing something like this, Spectacular Camel, thank you for subscribing. A lot of our friends are here. Mule Scanner just donated 100 bits. Thanks for that. Appreciate your support, guys. Going into the new year, we will stream tomorrow, Friday morning. So we've got subs from Acerbate, Spectacular Camel. Um, I've got a submission from Spectacular Camel. That's who I forgot. You guys might be out of order with the submissions. I'm going to do Mr. Slow and Spectacular Camel first, and Astrobate, Princess Chess, Hubatis, and Warnaki. And yes, I probably forgot someone. So anyway, the principle is these type of queen moves, like queen c7, queen b6, the idea is a good one, but can black afford to play this way? You know, neglecting his king still being in the center of the board. I mean, queen b6 has a bad reputation for black. And queen c7, I would imagine, you know, is is kind of like similar, um, but not as not as aggressive because you're not actually attacking that bishop on b5. I mean, the same variations actually exist for white. You know, if we look at um, how would I? What would I point to? Uh, probably like the c4, knight f6, knight f3, e6. I mean, what comes to my mind is like this knight c3, bishop b4 sort of um, pseudo nimzo. It's called the Anglo Indian defense. But I mean, here, I've had trouble playing these type of positions. Like, I've had some games with white against Alexander Ivanov, some other people. Variations I lost against them. Um, what is this Indian guy's name? Oh, what was his name? Seth Rahman. I lost against him with some game with Queen B3. It's always tricky if you play this type of stuff. Your development is kind of slow. Now with black, it should be even worse. So Queen B6 is dubious according to the, the books. Not a reliable variation for black. However, I don't know it that well. Um, knight c3 is best, and white is actually threatening to play knight d5 here. I guess you, you would call that a threat of sorts. Now knight, knight f6, I suppose, is a move. Um, the point is, if knight d5, you can't play queen takes bishop because of knight c7 check. Alright, yours doesn't deserve deep analysis. Don't deserve it. What do you deserve? Cole. 
this year. Something else. Even worse. E6. Yes. So I've probably played this for black, but... You know, th this position re reverse colors exists, and it's already kind of shaky there. But being a tempo down... So we've got bishop takes e6 unprovoked. Queen takes. D4 takes. And now knight takes. Basically, white will try to outstrip black in development and then open it up with some sacrifices or something like that. This this looks to be like critical. Let's see, castles, a6, stopping knight b5, and now rook e1. And we're already threatened to like wreck black with... We're threatening to wreck black with positional like knight sacrifices like knight d5. Like horrible things can happen if black isn't careful. So... It's interesting. Yeah, bad games make for great analysis. You didn't get or give presents this year, really? You didn't get or give presents this year? It's so disappointing. Let's see, castles, a6, bishop c6, you did play it. Okay, so this happened. I do that a lot, like I scroll through the moves I don't realize. So instead black played b5, Whoops, we just transposed to the St. George defense, I think. Um, this is playable but dubious for black, I guess, because of, well, at least d5. I would think, you know, you have some interesting stuff here other than d5. You could play rook e1. This actually happened in the Ruiz Delgado game. Who is... Oh, Alejandro Ramirez. So these guys are really good players. Um, Cuban against... Uh, where's Alejandro from? Costa Rica? Anyway, I guess <clears throat> Ramirez lives... He probably lives in the United States. I don't know. But anyways, you, pro you probably have ideas like Nike 5. It's still not easy, though. I mean, Black doesn't have to take it if you sacrifice a knight. Let's see what happened there. CD4, knight d5c. He just ignores it and plays like knight f6. Surprisingly, black was able to, to withstand this. The Cuban school of chess here. White attacking like an absolute maniac. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you could be in for with black, though. You've got to be really, really careful. It's a tribute to Black that he survived that. Peace sacrifices. Okay, but Mr. So plays like more positionally. I mean, this is just a space advantage, and, and Black is kind of confined. Luckily, Black has gotten rid of that knight on b8, though, because if he had a knight on b8, I don't know how it's getting out now. It wouldn't get out. Black, Black should play queen c7. He's got this diagonal under control. So I'm looking at this from the perspective of the St. George defense. In the St. George defense, my knight is trapped on b8. It's not quite as bad as that. Um, all right, so here, wow. I didn't expect you to play e5. It's, um, it's not a developing move, but it's interesting because you do get e4 for your pieces. My fear is that your white square control Once you play e5, you may lose white square control in the center. And that's what we're, we're talking about here. Believe me, I have a lot of experience playing the, the St. George, even like some over the board games. But I have a lot of games where this kind of thing has happened. Yes, his bishop is dead. But black can play f6 later on, Mr. Slow. And, you know, it's, it's difficult to guarantee that, that his pieces won't get out eventually. This diagonal is extremely dangerous. There's f6 break. It's not like you play d6 and it's game over because his bishop can't move out. And I mean, I guess ultimately he could play something like knight h6, f6, knight f7, g6, bishop g7. So this isn't game over. And this diagonal is still very dangerous. 
I would say it's still even kind of even a little tricky for white to handle. Queen c6 and the diagonal. Rook e1, controlling the e for a square. So black has f5 here. You know, I would think that would be Tony Miles, Michael Basman. I was inspired to play the St. George by Miles. Can you cast along as black? Of course. I mean, I've had all kinds of crazy things with black in the St. George, which is what this essentially is now. But I mean, he's going to try to do stuff like g5, g4. White can get annihilated really easily. So Mr. Slow has to be careful. He hasn't overextended himself here. g6 isn't as good. Rook e1, g6, knight e4. I mean, that's why f5 was a good move. This is such an important move. I mean, if you play f5, you do give up f6. But um, still there's ways to develop. And yes, castle's queen side is a possibility. Although I want to I remain flexible with black as long as possible. Yes, g5, of course. So this allowing, this doesn't look good. I don't like knight e4 for black. Bishop g7, and now bishop g5. Not optimal, what black has done with the place. Donald Trump wouldn't appreciate the decorations. It looks like Melania has been decorating black's position here. You have to keep up with the times with apropos, you know, chess jokes. But I don't like the decorations here for black. It doesn't look good what he's done. Um, I don't like what she's done with the place, seriously. There's a huge hole on f6. We can't get out. So, and then even bishop f6 is interesting. What if we just play bishop f6? Is that like permanent paralysis for the rest of our lives? Like, what do we do? Black can try to trade queens, maybe with like queen to d5. Queen d5, queen c1. We, we could avoid the exchange of queens. I mean, still, you can't just ignore this, though. What's black going to do like this? Pawn takes. Bishop f8. And then this, obviously, you know, is a thing at some point later. But I'm not feeling comfortable. Chessmer just gifted a tier 1 sub to Sada Masa. Good choice. But I'm not real excited about that. Bishop f6 looks strong. Maybe knight f6 is good too. But I feel like this just like steps on black and, and kind of clamps down on the space advantage. Maybe even stronger. I guess black could try something like not taking and playing king f8, but then they're basically paralyzed. It's going to be difficult for black to coordinate. You know, he may be positionally lost. So knight f6 check, perhaps this is also good, but I'm, I'm slightly skeptical. I mean, black has king f8 maybe as well. I guess I would play bishop takes f6 and then my knight's trap, but we can get it out eventually. Like bishop f6, well, you're gonna take with the pawn. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't like this. It's not as good, it's not as good. Now he's got g5 and counterplay. Now you should definitely have played bishop f6, and it looks like it's over after that. You know, again, maybe black can survive. Do you have an even weirder move? Is it possible to play bishop e7? I don't think that's going to work, right? You could just take it and take with the king. But you gotta keep an open mind. I like bishop f6. Alright, so this looks like it was it was premature. It was a fast game, Mr. Slow. Seems to have too much counterplay for black here. He's given him a pretty good chance. Okay, it's it's unclear, but Black has more play than he should. Now he's trying to pick off your f6 pawn. <sighs> counterplay, but I don't know if it's fast enough with a4. I mean, my feeling is that Mr. Slow was, like, strategically winning, and instead he's, like, in an unclear situation where he could possibly lose. Yeah, this is a 
brutal shot, rook takes c5 with the back rank mate. Nice. And let's start counting our squares. Oof. So he has to play queen b7 only move. And then you have rook c7. Man. Oh, he has queen what? He did what? He took on d6. Alright, so if queen b7, threatening rook takes f3, not really. Black, black needs to run the king over here, and he would be alright. Can you put black away now? You have like rook takes b5. You have other cool moves like maybe queen a7. I don't know if queen a7 threatens anything though. That's that's the kind of funny thing about that move. Does this actually threaten anything? Am I missing something here? Feels like white should be winning. Where's the knockout blow? We should have some kind of back ranker. Mr. Sohan says B4. You mean B4 for you? Oh my god. The positional B4. Fixing the pawn on B5. Whoops. Wow. Now where did that come from? I knew that King F8, King G7 seemed like a good idea. <laughs> That's devastating. Oh no. There's no way to defend. What an amazing move. E5 is... E5 is just everything falls. Black's toast. Wow. So B4 was lights out. If Queen B7. Therefore Queen D6 gives him a piece. Check here. Take. And it's a technical win. Knight simply can come to D3. Where it guards F2, we're up a clear piece. Easy, easy game. Maybe this was a little bit riskier. We're still winning, I guess. Check. Did you have... You have a mate. Mate in two. With queen c5, queen c7. I'm like, Mr. Insta mate spotter. Known for my spotting of mates in one and mates in two. You found it. A little late, but better than never. And you always make sure not to get back rank mated. A good, you know, a good instinct for Mr. Slow. Anyway, that was our first game. Thanks. That was fun. Someone on sound, and we're not key. We need a sort of shorthand nickname for someone on sound. I just called him unsound. But we should kind of come up with... Somewhat on sound. S W U. Su Wu. So Wu. Alright, So Mu. So Mu. Doesn't sound right. Somewhat unsound. It would be Swas. Someone else said that already. Who was it that came up with Swas? I swear to God, like someone used those initials on the stream before. It just just occurred to me. Was that you, Asturbate? Swas. All right, all right, Swas, you're in. So we've got um, to thank everybody again for the donations. Appreciate it for the new year. This will be the first good year in a while, I predict. Mr. Sohan, spectacular camel. Is there a spectacular camel in the house? Did I miss spectacular camel? We'll just look up people. Spectacular. Camel. Oh my god, that's why I'm an idiot. You're Yabatis. Ridiculous. I'm looking for spectacular camel. Crazy. Need to wake up. Alright. Here's a game containing a cute trick. I guess his position were in ruins when he resigned. Alright. Silicius. 
Coach Ah, happy almost New Year. This is a 30-0 rated classical. Silicius against Yobatis. Yobatis is black. All right, Yobatis specializes in slightly offbeat openings. He's got the the knight c3, knight c6 thing going on, usually. Not only that, but likes that. You don't drink, but you're feeling a little drunk anyway. Well, you're a lightweight. That's why. Typical lightweight. The lightest weight. Getting drunk without alcohol at all. E4, knight c6, knight f3. So, Yobatis and I have talked about this. You know, g6 is, is a kind of cool... He's using the, by the way, the, the acerbate approach. I think the d4. Oh, you bought a case of beer for tonight. It's almost gone already. Damn, I hope you're sharing. Share sharing with the with, <laughs> with the family at least. E four knight c six knight f three g six d four. I'm just starting on my first beer. It's very funny. I got American sized beer. You know, one of the best things of living in Eastern Europe is that the beers are bigger. That was like my typical like tourist reaction when I first came to, to Hungary. Man, it's awesome that the beers are like, you know, 50% bigger. Um, but I bought some Japanese beer and they're like American size, like 12 ounces. It's really weird. Not Fisher raiding with a party of 12. Thanks for the raid. Not Fisher. Good to meet you. We're doing an analysis of um, some games here amongst the subscribers to the stream. You're welcome to to join us, take part. Um, thanks, Raiders. Happy New Year in advance. So G6 is a fun line. Now White's threatening D5. We've got Bishop G7, so there's no nonsense with like D5, Queen D4, weird stuff like that. All by myself, I haven't started today, though. You bought a case of beer for tonight, but it's almost gone already. No all by myself. I haven't started today, though. So I get it. You Like, you bought a case of beer for yourself early, and then you drank it on past days, and now it's almost gone, but it's like New Year's Eve. It was hard. It's hard to pick stuff up, you know? It's hard to pick the context of, of stuff up. <laughs> when it's online, what exactly people mean. I understand now. So a lot of it was missing already. You drank it prematurely. Negro Modelo. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I, I never, um... never bought Negro Modelo. Maybe once. I like Corona, but it's kind of lost something due to obvious reasons. Um... Seriously, I wonder what what percentage of their market they lost Corona beer brutal it has to have an effect um, anyways knight c3 alright let's get to, to business here d6 bishop c4 bang mistake what is that alright so I had a game just like this recently um, I think I played the exact same position with black and I don't remember it was on the stream for sure I don't remember who it was against maybe a simul game the problem with bishop c4 is that you're going to be vulnerable to these tricks with like knight f6, knight takes e4. It's very similar to the Pierce. Basically, the setup is a hybrid between the Pierce and the and the Nimzovich. I've played both colors, but I would normally with white play you know something safe like h3, maybe bishop e2, possibly bishop e3. I don't have Corona beer. Um, you can buy it in Hungary, of course. I'm not a big fan of Mexican beer. I like Corona, but I'm not. I'm not an expert. I live in Eastern Europe. It's weird to drink Mexican beer, and there's just too much good beer in in this region to be like drinking Corona or something like that. You know, it's it's a, we have better beer. Um, I'm drinking Japanese. <laughs> Try to be funny. Normally, I don't drink Japanese beer. I've got a lot of good local beer, but but I happen to be drinking Japanese Japanese beer tonight. 
d6, bishop c4. Yeah, I've played this setup a lot against everybody. I play this a lot. Yabatis doesn't play the best line here. Um, you're supposed to play knight f6. And again, the key is to threaten knight takes here. Like a Peart's trick. Maybe Corona beer immun immunizes you. Um, too early to make jokes about it. Maybe down the line, when, when the virus dies down, they could make some kind of advertising campaign, but I wouldn't bet on it. Best to just, like, stay away from the subject, I would think. Sapporo is good. I don't... I have this Asahi, but it's very, like, an American beer, basically. It's basically just a good American beer. Tastes like. Anyways, Knight F6. I get bored of the, like, strong sort of Eastern European stuff. Try to mix it up. Anyway, I don't like E6. Yabatis, like, sticks with this, but it's not great, you know. This isn't really the best. This is better. We have a concrete threat of Knight takes E4. And we have Bishop G4. So I don't agree with you, Yabatis. You know that I don't like this as much. Did that say Peter Thiel? Oh, actually, Peter Thiel is a chess player. He's like a chess master. But it's Thomas Thiel. But it's true. Um, the PayPal founder or whatever. He is actually a, a chess master level chess player, isn't he? E6, castles. Knight on G to E7. Bishop E3. Castles. I don't like this... It's almost like Gibatis is playing a, a bad hippo sort of thing. We've got queen d2, yeah, and there's no counterplay. I would argue that white's position is just, just better. You know, he's played this, okay, you haven't taken advantage of the bishop on c4, really. White is slightly better. d5... Yeah, I mean, maybe he should have taken a timeout to do something about that. You can always play bishop e3. But probably it's not the end of the world. I, I don't really like taking on d5, though. If you take on d5, you're improving black's position by bringing that e-pawn to d5. When you look at the chessboard, you have to think about not only what you're doing for yourself, but what you're doing for your opponent. And this is obviously applicable to all games, poker, whatever. Weak players don't think about the other player's cards. They only think about their cards. It's the same in chess. Like, weak players don't think about what they're doing for their opponent's pieces. They only think about their pieces, like, you know, maximum, depth one. When you play this move, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, black is improving the bishop on c8. You're basically like giving this guy all these extra squares for for the bishop. So if white has a choice here, he shouldn't make this exchange on d5. White should try to keep the status quo. Whether that move is bishop b3 or bishop e2, or not putting the bishop on c4 in the first place, duh. You know, maybe that's a good option. So if I play bishop e3, what do you do? You know, you've got one, two, three. You can take, but if you take, you're left with a strong pawn here. You can reinforce it with c3. I normally go hunting for the bishop if I'm black, but it's not enough to equalize. I mean, black's position is still, still squishy. You know, there's all this problem here with bishop h6. White has a strong center. White is just better. Of course, Dr. Trip Chance. That's the primary problem with the Nimzovich defense, which I try to play, but it's I know it's not really like a great opening. Knight on c6 is misplaced in front of the it's blocking the c pawn and, and it's on and the c pawn is unable to influence the center. It's fundamental. Yeah, the setup with knight f6 is good. Exactly. Ornaki. So anyway, so take, take, here. White has kind of sold some of his advantage now. I mean, this bishop is no longer a problem. The knight is actually putting pressure on that pawn that needs protection from pieces. White has the same problem on his side. 
Hey, look, you have a bad Chigora Knight too, on C3 now. Critical moment. There's no problem with F6. You know, I like this move. I would play F6 here. I think it's actually probably best. I don't see an issue. One of my favorite things to do, as someone on sound knows, is to like play G5 in this type of structure. I do play D6 sometimes. A lot of play. I play this type of setup also sometimes, but I'm not saying that it's great for black. I just try to avoid mainline theory sometimes. It looks like G5. The F6 and, and G5 idea is a problem for white. I would think that white's, white's not got any advantage here. Yeah. Engine, I just turned on the Oracle. It says that black is slightly better. Oh. It fell in white's favor by 0.1. But let's call it equal. Mestrovich. Warnaki, how do you know about Mestrovich? He's like, uh... Tobias and I, um, Yabatis and I, have, uh, have referenced uh, Mestrovich a lot. Um, I never met him. He was like a Balkan, you know, I am. But he's like the greatest player, uh, regular, to play the, the Chigorin, um, Nimzovich, I mean, all the time. He was obsessed with Knight C6. Unfortunately, I think he passed away some years ago. So we don't have his games any longer. But bishop g5, queen d6. Alright, this queen looks kind of exposed here, and I like f6 because it gains, it gains time. Yeah, we regret not playing f6 now. Doesn't f6 and g5 blocking your dark score bishop? Captain Obvious. What's up, man? Someone on sound. Yeah, it does. I mean, this is important, obviously. Someone on sound. AKA Captain Obvious. Bishop G5. F6 blocks your bishop. That's why That's why Yabatis didn't want to play it. He has a thing about not moving his F pawn. But I remember like studying with Roman Gigi Ashvili in the Accelerated Dragon, we had positions like this. And one of the best things about playing F6, Roman was really good with like F3 and F6 type of ideas, but he, he would roll this bishop over from E6 to F7. This is a strong maneuver. You can play bishop E6 and then secure the, the D5 pawn. No, I mean, you can't be too biased about it. That bishop on G7 will come back to life eventually. It's like a King's Indian. You know, even if it doesn't doesn't control that diagonal, it'll pop back out to f8. It can come out to h6 later on. But those pawns are, are brutal. Like these pawns, man, they can just like ruin White's position. One, you know, random g4 and his whole position falls apart. Oftentimes, catching White off guard. You know, they don't expect those pawns to be so dangerous. You know, as I talked about a couple days ago, I mean, pawn play is it's the hardest thing in chess to master. I'm surprised by how strong players I encounter on a daily basis who are basically very weak. Very weak with pawn play. Um, but you about just misplayed this. You know, I don't like queen d6. White doesn't repeat moves, please repeat one. Well, that's a good move. See, here white has knight g5. No. Okay, bishop e6 is a good move. We've got a lot of pressure. Wait a minute. What? Wait, let me understand this again. The bishop's on here. It's protecting d4. It's it's triple protected. It's triple attack. He goes bishop g5. I recommend it f6. You play queen d6. Now he's got a problem with this, so he should probably, like, take. But his move's all right. Now he should take on c6, reducing the pressure on d4, I guess. 
It, the time has come. But he plays this instead, and this is just hanging on d4. Whoops. Almost got past me. I mean, I'm so excited it's New Year's and I drank one beer already. Yubatis has a thing about obvious tactics. Sometimes he he just trusts. He's a very trusting soul. So basically, if you hang a piece or something, he's likely he doesn't even like give give himself credit for that. He's overprotecting his own center with this. Obviously, the pawn was just hanging. Now the guy takes. Okay, let's just pretend like he did that before. And knight e5. Someone recently said to me that the threat is stronger than the execution. You know, that, that seems relevant here. Dr. Tripchance, I have some idea in what Larson opening move order we were talking about. Knight a3. Dr. Tripchance, that's another subject. But I was talking about, um, you know, discussing this on the stream is kind of weird, but I was talking to you about no d5, you know, knight c6, knight f6, bishop d6. The knights on f6 and, and c6. I tried to explain that, you know, I said no d5, but knight f6, knight c6. Here, instead of knight e5, does white have a better move? Yeah, this is probably a good move, actually. Very awkward situation now. Does anybody wish we had played f6? I wish we had played f6 now. Can you play c5 here? Can you play knight takes d4? Can you play c5 here? Just doesn't seem to do anything. Can you play g5 here? It would be funny if g5 wins material. Uva would have missed it. That would be funny if this was a good move. Fine gold played Chigorin. Yeah, Ben did play the Chigorin. Though, you know, I don't know how 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 much he played it. I'm not a student of Ben. Um, ben Feingold. but it's true. Ben did, did play the Chigorin. Who else used to play the Chigorin? Maybe Josh Friedel when he was young. How Terry? <laughs> I don't know. All right, Morozevich, Queen e8. Can we play at a g5, Bishop g5, f6? Knight takes c6, Queen d7. I wonder how good this g5 is. It loses. I missed something. Wow, what? Here, here, and you just go back. This is hanging. 99% of tactics don't work. There's another one. Another example of... You gotta at least have an open mind and look for things, or you're never gonna find anything. Alright, queen e8. This is... I, I want to avoid this, if I can help it. I don't like the situation here. Blavix, welcome. Yeah, Feingold's ridiculous with a never play f6. It's based for it's it's for for five year old children. It's a five year old children rule for when you go to your first tournament and you're five years old. It's not meant to be like you know a rule that nineteen hundred players who play in tournaments apply to their games. You know, I hope you understand. Ben turned it into kind of a joke, but. You have to stop adhering to that rule once you're older than five years old and you know how all the pieces move and stuff like that. I mean, anyways, I don't like the situation. Now I like it better. I like it better after that. Thank you for taking the pressure off the e-file, dude. Man, I really, really want to play this break. You bought us with c5. You know, we have this nice diagonal for the queen, too. If we could play c5, maybe sacrifice a pawn temporarily, get the queen out there. You guys understand why f6 was important in this position. Why has a support point on e5. 
it's not just about like playing for g5 or something like that if you take away white's support point on e5 it's huge so knight d6 we're getting tied down to the c6 pawn i'm not happy Ugh. very awkward situation here tied down to our pawn on c6 and there's like that rook like the sword of damocles any moment the e-file is going to open up white also should think about f3 to keep us off of e4 same principle he plays this and now all hell is going to break loose knight b5 queen c5 man white is uh quite the positional player here what's going on this guy is making us look um look bad Of course, bishop d7 is passive. We would never want to do this. We would never ever want to do this voluntarily. You never want to play queen e8, bishop d7 with your with your queen on the e-file and his knight on e5. This is like we're holding on by a thread. This did not go well. Bishop e6. All right. So now the question is, what happens after knight takes c6? We just lost the pawn, and it protects d4. But this was not meant to be like a, a one-sided story, like Yvadis, like crushes his opponent. He's obviously worse. He's under pressure. Knight d6, and white is winning this position. He's a clear pawn up with a structural sort of uh, positional advantage. c3. I don't know, but I don't like this precarious situation with our knight on c6 with white. I wouldn't want to be there. Um, he could have just played like a sensible move, like bishop takes d6. By the way, two knights against two bishops, speaking of Morozevich. This doesn't look too good. I mean, we're pretty much done, I think. Black's done. Black's, black's down two pawns. No compensation. Almost done. I don't like this at all. You were lucky he gave you a reprieve with c3. And suddenly, the knight and queen are a little precarious. Knight b7. And yeah, what do I do? You have a knight e7 check? Knight e7 check, possibly, saving the game. Knight e7 check with the idea of queen takes c7. White was the master of calculation. He has 20 minutes here. So all you have to do is calculate knight e7 check, king h8, and queen takes c7. Knight's protected, and this knight's hanging. And you're still going to lose after that. But he couldn't be bothered to calculate two moves. So White instead, with 20 minutes on the clock, plays this. Missing the proverbial knight d8. Proverbial knight d8. White awkwardly loses a piece now. However, he could play knight takes a7, knight a7, rook a7, and this is guarded. Now I would assume trading queens, but it's only two pawns for a piece. So he tries to do this, rook b7, b3. And now he was so disgusted that he resigned. But that's, yeah, that was sad. I mean, it looks like just just 87 check and you were still lost. I don't mean to, um, I don't mean to pour cold water on, on your game, but this is, this is still, it was funny though how he lost. Allowing knight d8. That's so sick. So instead of knight a7, he could... Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's just losing a piece. It's not enough. Entertaining. Always entertaining games from Yabatis. We're not looking for, for perfection. It's more about entertainment. Alright. So Yabatis is done. Mr. Slowhand is done. 
Oh, Yabatis is in the list twice. He was Spectacular Camel and Yabatis. That's why you confused me. Move 11, welcome. JCS, thanks for being here as a moderator. Mr. Coffee, I think Mr. Coffee's grandmother passed away. So I just wanted to, to send my condolences to Mr. Coffee. Um, it's always brutal to lose one's family members, but now in the holidays, during COVID, it's, it's been painful for everybody, I'm sure. So, Mr. Coffee, if you're out there, condolences for your grandma. Um, we got another game up. Astrobate is up next. I've got some new submissions here. Move 11. So, I know Mr. Coffee hasn't been on that much lately. Everybody's busy during the holidays. We've got JCS picking up the slack in the moderator slot there. Appreciate it. You know who else passed away? Marianne from, from Gilligan's Island. There's only one remaining cast member of Gilligan's Island is still alive. My childhood. All right, we've got Astrobate, where is it? That's not it. Well, we'll look it up. Coach Ah, you also lost your grandmother. Like everybody's dying from COVID. It's a tragedy, millions of people. And there are people out there like denying the reality of it. You know, that's the scary thing. I mean, I guess anytime there's a tragedy, it's easier to just like bury your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening say it's fake news or something. Um, easiest way to deal with the problem is pretend it doesn't exist. This is not what I was looking for, Astrobate. Sorry. Let me check my messages from Astrobate. Or just let's, yeah, let's get Astrobate up there. Yeah. Scary year. Glad it's finished. Maybe we'll get some semblance of normality by, by the summertime. All right, here it is. In Pawn the Swiss Blitz, I won on time against Mule Scanner and against Mr. Slow. And again, against Kylar, I won convincingly by my first win against Legion Legion. Legion Legion Owie, he calls him. At least I made no blunders. And if I may, I'd be pleased to present my submission for this week's edition in live commentary of Subscribers Game. Subscribers Games, my upset victory over Legion Legion Owie. Man, I mean, is his name really Legion Legion Owie? It's Legion Legion Owu. All right, I'm feeling silly tonight. So Legion Legion Owu, who's very very strong in the opening, by the way. It's um, it's a bad pairing for Astrobate. Because he's really kind of weakest, I think. Acerbate's weakest stage of the game is probably either his openings or his end game. His middle game is good, you know, so that's like the massive chunk of the middle part of the game. Seems like that's Acerbate's strongest point. He's not experienced in end games, and his openings are kind of a little bit limited. Whereas Legion Legion is kind of expert in the opening. I would expect Legion Legion to have the you know edge based on rating and opening knowledge. If Astrobate can survive the opening um, against Legion Legion, then he has a chance. So it's Knight of 3, G6. Wow, Astrobate, like where did this come from? You just so flat out, you're flat out playing the modern defense on move one. Wow. Astrobate's been playing the, the Banco Gambit, the Accelerated Dragon, Hyper Accelerated Dragon. But I didn't know you really had the capability to play the Modern Defense straight up. Of course, if E4, he plays C5. That makes sense. But Legion, Legion, see, there's a problem here. 
If you play the Benoni, this is or the Benoni. This is still not really a Benoni. I guess it's always it's always possible to play the Benoni later. But you may not get a chance to play a modern Benoni. You might get into kind of like a. You might get into kind of a, a Schmid Benoni type of thing. We'll see. Bishop G7. Legion, Legion here makes a mistake. I mean, I think he should play C4. Now. Though it's still possible to play the modern Benoni there, right? I mean, we're still getting a modern Benoni. C5, D5, E6. It's not too late to get a form of modern Benoni. Okay, so you can't really... You can't really take advantage of this too much. Legion, Legion should play... If you want to take advantage of Astrobate, you should play e4 here. Like Roman, Jinji Ashbili and I studied together a lot for a couple of years, and and Roman would play c5 here, but that's an inferior Benoni, you know, and Astrobate can't really, you know, play that. The problem is Legion Legion doesn't play e4. So you have to play e4 to take advantage of Astrobate here, and that's not his repertoire. So he plays g3. G3, knight f6, bishop g2. It's a king's Indian. But Astrobate plays d5, going Grunfeld style. So, I mean, this is crazy. The Astrobate, you have no experience in this type of position whatsoever. You're, you're just completely playing a random opening you don't play. That's nuts. Against a player who probably has some practice. Castle, castle, knight e5, knight g4. And that, that's a move. Astrobate, where did this come from? Where did Astrobate's secret opening knowledge come from? The Czech Benoni is currently under a cloud. Coach Ah, can I quote you on that? It's been under a cloud for like a hundred years. I mean, probably never wasn't under a cloud. It, it is a cloud. What a quote. Informaticus. Yeah, knight g4 is a move if you take the c pawns off the board. Yeah, I know. I can't believe this is a thing already. How does Astrobate even come up with this? He never even plays like the King's Indian, let alone the Grunfeld. Where where did you get this? He just like made it up. All right. So on knight g4, does White have any other options? Yeah, I understand that this is a a fianchetto of Grunfeld after c4, c6, cd. The Czech Benoni will always be under a cloud. I mean, it's just not really a great opening. But it leads to closed positions, so it's useful against players who can't handle closed positions. I agree that f4 should be considered. I bet even c4 is a move. I guess on c4, though, we could... We could take, let's see, is this a move? You could take on e5, then take on c4. That's probably not great for black. I mean, there are moves, like bishop f4 is a move, f4 is a move, and, and the move in the game, knight takes g4. Very rare position. I've never played this for either side. Well, let's check out what the oracle says. Apparently, it comes close to equalizing. I mean, I didn't talk about ninety five. Yeah, you know, we really should probably talk about this move. I mean, it seems weird to play this like now. It's funny, like, if you play c4, black plays c6, you exchange pawns, and now knight e5 is like a main line. But what's the difference here? I mean, why is it not as good in this position to the point where the engine thinks that black is actually better?
Just read an article. Ah, uh, yeah, Serper likes the evil chess site. He writes articles for, for cheese.com. Not easy to get a job for a chess player in a, in the COVID era. Serper's a good player. He, you know, he was a good, a really good player. I don't know. You need, need to do something to make a living, I guess. I think I'll I'll go to the grave with a record of one draw and one loss against them. Um, all right. I think I lied. I'm going to go to the grave with with a record of two draws and one loss against them. Castle, castle, ninety five. Ninety five is weird. Who told you not to, you know, didn't anybody tell you not to move the same piece twice? I thought he lived in like Seattle or something. Somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, but I might be wrong. Knight g4, knight g4, bishop g4, c4. We could transpose. I think Astrobate must, must, he must be cheating with the opening explorer or something. I mean, I love him, but it's unbelievable. Like, how? Astrobate, how do you just, like, randomly play 12 moves of theory in the Grunfeld when you never play this opening? That's just insane. The Serper didn't used to live in Washington, he lived somewhere else. He played in a lot of national tournaments and then dropped out of the scene. But I mean, he hasn't been around much since I left. He's older than me, probably. So anyway, I don't understand how Astrobate gets this. Where do you, how do you know to play this stuff? And then White finally played Bishop E3, which is me on a bad day. So it's like, Legion Legion against Acerbate and and Legion Legion's the first one to make an inferior move in the opening. What? Now Acerbate misses this crazy E5 move. The Rudolf Spielman attack. If takes D4, White has Bishop takes C6, and this is Wang Yui against Washie. So you don't lose a piece, but what's the deal here? D takes C3, Bishop takes B7, okay, some kind of messy position. What Wang Yu like gave the guy a pawn on B2? Is that what happened? Damn, I mean that looks kind of scary. Was that a good idea? To let that pawn survive? That's an old game, but it looks like it wasn't a good idea to let the pawn get it get down on b2 not a good idea Vachier's prep was just good e5 is is a brutal move it looks like after that only black could be better finally astrobe ran out of inspiration here and played bishop f5 which is a waste of time now we're going to be lucky if we don't lose a pawn Knight d4, knight d4, bishop d4, queen d4. Can you play knight d4 here? Yeah, that sucks too though. I mean, this is hanging. There's stuff like bishop takes, bishop takes. Well, maybe this isn't so bad. e3, queen takes. This is better for white. It's actually really bad for really bad for black, probably. I don't like this. Yeah, he was from Uzbekistan, man. He played in um He played a famous game against Kasparov somewhere. Yeah, he was like one of the strongest players in Uzbekistan. Absolutely. He was a very highly regarded player when he was young. Um, 
but I think, you know, unfortunately, in that time, maybe living in the United States wasn't the best place for chess players. I'm not sure. Moving to the United States in the early 90s was necessarily a guarantee of career success as a chess grandmaster. Um, all right, bishop f5, bishop d5, knight b4. Aspirate is now two pawns down, I'm losing track. Two pawns down with the initiative. <laughs> You're two pawns down. This trade doesn't seem great either. He's playing a little too fast, black. Then e5, and it looks like d5. Pretty obvious move here, d5. It's it's really, really bad. I mean, black can't play f5, he gets buried by knight, knight c5, knight e6. So if it had been me versus Acerbate, this would have been the end of the line. After d5, I think white's, white's like winning. For some reason, he didn't play d5. And now the bishop, the bishop lives. And he misses this. I mean, knight c5, knight e6. You don't have g5, obviously. But you do have this. I would think knight c5 would be an interesting try. But already, and I'm surprised here by Astrobate, I mean, you, you've got good play with your bishop. Dynamic pieces. You should probably keep the, the structure fluid with the bishop here versus a knight. Yeah, there's a lot of scary stuff. Maybe bishop h6. All the black pieces are really active. Maybe rook e8. You know, he is two pawns up with white, but one of them's doubled, and black has a sort of temporary initiative. I um, I don't like Astrobate's decision to close the structure, though. I mean, theoretically, your pawns are on the right color. But, I mean, right now, it feels like we want to keep a fluid position for as long as we can. So I would keep the tension. Generally speaking, with bishop versus knight, I'd, li I'd like the pawns to be more fluid. Rook b1 is insanely passive for white now. Why would you put the rook on b1? Rook clearly... Okay, white's position isn't so easy, though. You know, your, your suggestion of this, bishop h6, could be menacing. It's not that easy for white to consolidate. I mean, he took time out to play a6, which is... He didn't know what to do. And then knight c4. Oops, another pawn. And he dropped a piece. Basically, Legion Legion just dropped a piece with queen, knight d5, queen, queen, queen c3. Black has some pressure, but he's three pawns down. It's, it's objectively like winning for white. It will take technique. You know, notice like there's a pass pawn here that can't move. There's a pass pawn here. They can't move. There's a pass pawn here. Well, not a pass pawn, but they might as well be pass pawns. This pass pawn. All of his extra pawns, he's like one, two, three, three pawns up. I said four pawns up. Whatever. Three pawns up. But it's hard hard to mobilize these pawns. It is annoying, you know. This is not like you're just three pawns up for nothing. It's hard for Legion Legion to get his position rolling. You know, he can't play e4. So, it's much more tricky than you think. And he was just down on time and dropped a piece. And then a really nice rook takes e3 with a clear. Yeah, Astrobate. I mean, we, we, we saw a decent game here from you. And no, no major blunders. This is the one thing about Astrobate you'll notice. He rarely makes huge blunders. He's good like that. You know, people generally, like, kind of roll over and die against him. They're the first ones to make a major mistake. And he's very alert tactically.
but this wasn't a really correct game. I mean, Legion Legion was, was totally dominating. Your pawn sacrifices were, were speculative at best. But I was surprised by the opening where Astrobate was actually... Astrobate actually got the better of him in the opening that he doesn't even play. I mean, that was maybe just beginner's luck. Anyway, maybe the king's Indian. I think the Benoni um, serves Astrobate better because it leads to more open positions than the king's Indian. Maybe the Grunfeld is, is the opening for Astrobate to play. All right, guys, we got Princess Chess up next. Let me see if I can find this. Thanks for reviewing. Thanks for reviewing. Interesting game from Princess Chess from Club Knight that I was losing, beginning quite early, and locked into winning. All right, this is Princess Chess with White. Astrobate, congratulations. A lot of upset wins lately. I think Astrobate's rating should be moving up to the 1700 barrier. His game is getting a little more consistent. He's getting more upsets. Legion Legion's been really tough against me in the simul, so that's a sizable win for you. All right, Princess Chess is playing white in 15 plus 10 against Alpha Alpha a week ago. Princess Chess is really, I think, talented tactically, but she, she has a kind of awkward repertoire that leads to closed positions. And I've tried to encourage her. Astro Bates had a similar thing going on. You really have to think about your game, you know, where your where your strengths lie, and think about what openings complement your strengths. Both Princess Chess and Astro Bates were playing like closed openings more, even though they leaned toward having talent tactically. But here she's playing the white side of Karo Khan. It's hard to get an open game against Karo Khan. Panov is a good choice. You're welcome. I didn't say socially awkward. Your opening choices are awkward. E takes d5, c takes d5, c4. Yeah, and this is a good way to play. Another way you could play would be c4. My, my clock banging, knocking over the pieces blitz game with Hikaru that I should have won, where he flagged me with like king against king and queen, was this variation where Hikaru played e5 and I played knight f3. That's actually a good line for white though. Um, this also could be kind of closed though, if black chooses to play a Philidor or King's Indian type position. I mean, maybe it's it's a more more easy to play d4, but I'm just saying like most of the time you play c4, they play d5, you take, they take, you take, or you play d4. You know, this is another interesting way to play it though, Princess Chess. If you like the pan off, you could try playing this move order where you just like chop, 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 and take, and you guarantee an open position. A lot of people are, are more playing knight f6 here, but I think the queen d5 is kind of under underrated too. I guess this could transpose to other openings, uh, other isolated queen pawn positions. But anyway, that's another option, Princess, if you like open positions. There's an interesting move here, knight f6. Probably that's... That's like the professional move. I had, um, like, how did I have this? Justin Sarkar lost the game against me when he was young. I think where he tried to take this pawn on c6. I mean, this, this is really not recommended. You know, white, white gets in trouble getting behind the development. So anyway, that's that's a possible move order. White would play like knight c3, and you just like take, and then you're back in into a pan off. You're not playing with the IQP here. I have a particular pawn structure that I'm too in love with. What do you mean? Like, how do you avoid the IQP? It's almost always going to be an IQP unless you, you know, you can play bishop d3, but again, I don't think that would. That wouldn't suit your style either, you know. I don't really like this closed game again. You should definitely play c4, you did. 
black plays e6, white plays knight c3. But I mean, you can say what you want, but if black plays d takes c4, you're playing an IQP position. I mean, you, you can call it what you want, you know? I mean, this, this can happen at any moment. You're gonna get an IQP position. There's nothing you can do about it. I know now what to do. I'll just take on c4 right away against Princess Chess next time. I don't want to let her play c5. But again, I think you're going against your um, your natural strengths by, by playing closed games. This is like Asturbate playing d4. He has an obsession with bishop e3. So what is this, right? What is this? I mean, you're supposed to play either c takes d5 or knight f3. I'm surprised this is a move, but apparently it's a move. Let's go back a couple moves, okay, first of all. DK guy, who is divorced from my stream for personal reasons, I think he was playing games where he was doing this against me. I don't understand why black wants to play this first. Unless you reach this position by transposition, why not bring the knight to f6 first? What's the advantage in playing e6 first? Hey, I just want to block in my bishop on c8 for fun. So this is already like kind of a stupid move order for black. You should play knight f6. Nobody got banned, man. I don't ban anybody. It's, it's a voluntary separation. All right, knight f6, bishop e3, part of the protest movement. Why play e6 first? Knight c3, amicable, am, amicable divorce, a knight f6. All right, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop e3. What is this? The pawn structure that you're in love with is c5, b4 on the queen side. White has a passed pawn. This is merely a tarash. It's a tarash of sorts. You know, you can see that people play c5 right away. Princess Chess, did you play a similar move against me once? The Swedish variation of the of the Tarash. Swedish fish. I mean I would imagine if C five, like like black can just break right away. But what is Alexei Dreyev now about playing the black side of the Karakhan? Apparently B four and you still have something here. It doesn't. Well, this is. Does it really. Does white really have something here? It looks like not. Bishop e7. Check. Bd7. It looks like even here, black is okay if he's very careful. But I would think that would be a trickier move order, Princess Chess. If you want to play c5, maybe give it a shot right away. Let's see, knight here, bishop e3. The biggest problem for black is like not playing knight c6 too early. Because if you play knight c6 too early, when you go to play b6, white can like do stuff like bishop b5 and pin you. And that's a big problem. Wow, just b4 right away. All right, b6. See, black's problem is that he played a5 here. Black has to be very precise. So I remember old lines like this in, in Alexei Swayton's book on the Karo Khan. I had a book from, from the early 90s, the Karo Khan for the tournament player. Even though it was an old book, it was a very thoroughly researched book by Swayton, who was like a, a huge expert in the openings. There was fairly 
in-depth treatment about these C5 type of lines in the Panov, but I don't think that it would have been like this position because white normally wouldn't delay playing knight f3. I mean, this position probably exists with either knight f3 or like bishop g5 played, but I can't really imagine that, that there's much going on with bishop on e3. I, I don't think this is like a theoretical position. If we change the position, put the bishop either on g5 or the knight on f3 instead of moving the bishop, I bet we'll find games. This is something slightly different you're playing here. Bishop is kind of a passive piece. It does support c5. It also defends the rook on a1. So these lines where the queen protects the rook, the black plays a5, you can play a3, which is what happens now. But typically black strategy, you know, even going back to those Swayton analysis analyses, you know, the strategy is like b6. The idea is to play b6, set up a5, and eventually black can play, you know, maybe black can play exchange on, um, exchanging all the pawns and playing for like bishop a6, try to get the bishop outside, the bad bishop exchange out on a6. Yeah, there are games with c5 ideas. I mean, this is a normal strategy. I'm just saying like this exact position doesn't exist. But this looks like a mistake of like what happens if, correct me if I'm wrong, but like what happens if white plays b5 here? I mean, I don't understand. Is this, is this okay for black? That just looks like maybe black is positionally lost. Uh, I mean, what are you going to do? You must have e5 because if you don't have e5, you're done. I mean, this is the only move. You have to try e5 right away and pray you can get that pawn back. Some sort of knight g4. Jim, what's up? Jim likes the Karo Khan. Yeah, they're definitely Bofinic games in these c5 Panovs. I would think, like, well, I can just play b5. I mean, is there something for black here? No. Black is, like, done. You're going to try something crazy. I mean, b6, really? b6, c6? Good luck with that. I, I don't think that ultimately this is okay. You know, that pawn pr pretty much, like, wins the game. So it looks like this is the best shot, practically, to play some kind of crazy gambit, you know? So actually, Princess Chess, I think b5 is even stronger. Well, it's a lot stronger. a5 just, like, loses. No, I mean, this is just a huge blunder. You have to play b5. It's game over. It's, it's like, tragic blunder strategically for black. He can't play that move. That's why he needs to play b6 first. Put pressure on the c5 pawn. It won't be as easy now. Maybe a5 will be possible next move. I mean, it's funny though. I guess if you play something like b5 now, who knows, like, it could, all hell could break loose. I mean, this, this kind of thing happens in the Nimzo. What would happen here, you know, where it's like these two pawns against these two pawns? Move 11 would probably like this. Clear advantage to black, apparently. So that, <laughs> that's not the same. We don't quite want to do that unprovoked. Anyway, a5 is a blunder. a3 doesn't take advantage. Now we, like, transpose. So maybe if you play knight f3 in this position, you might even transpose in some kind of variation. Nope. Maybe your study doesn't allow uh, opening book. All right, it does. So it's just, there's no games with bishop e3. There are no no games where this has been reached. You get this, this looks like a Rubenstein uh, Nimzo, except your knight's not an e2. Yeah, there are, there are crazy games in the Panov where this happens. There are actual real lines with the bishop usually on g5, as I was saying. But Princess Chess, this, this is actually unfavorable for you. It's unfavorable for you because your bishop is getting hit by the pawn avalanche with, with bishop e3, e5, you know, d4. So that would be... I, I would bet if the bishop's on g5, it might have even been a real position. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Like, what is knight g4? I guess he's just desperate. Desperate. Maybe knight g4 is a good move. It feels like black needs to develop, but yeah. I guess he has to do something. Rook e8 looks a little slow. Um, yeah, alright, no knight g4. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm skipping ahead, though. Yeah, I don't like this move. What is B take C here? I like how Princess Chess was like, this is just a simple game or something. Don't pay too much attention to this. It's like the most dynamic pawn structure ever possible in the opening. There's like too much to analyze. We can't possibly. You know, another idea that I didn't mention is this. Plopping the knight into E4. That's a common theme. Maybe that's Black's right idea here. If he goes knight e4, what are you going to do? It also makes this possible. No, I think this actually looks strong for Black. This changes the position. If you take... This pawn takes up this position now. This queen is active here. I'm, I'm unsure. What's truly going on? I bet the oracle will suggest 94. No. The oracle suggests 94 right away. 94 is... Ah! There it is. No! Come on. Come on. It's like a horse race. Ah, yes. I'm just I'm going to stop it now. I was right. 94. See, it all depends where you stop it. It was like almost 94. I mean, this feels like a better move to me. But man, I mean, these positions are hard to play for both sides. All right, anyway, b6, knight f3, b takes c. Yeah, I mean, th this is just like really insipid. If you take that way, it's bishop a6, and black is, is okay. That's like a chicken way of playing the position for white. We are happy 2020 is over. This is the only way to play. And the other way is just lame. You know, b takes c, bishop a6. He can blockade the c6 square and, and trade off the the white square bishop. Okay, I mean, white's probably safe here. Computer says that BC is definitely the move. White's probably safe here. It's lame. I called it lame. It's like the only move. Princess Chess is just like, whatever. You know, just roll the dice. Well, you're not allowing e5, though. I mean, black black can't play e5. He doesn't have control of e5. You know, you're not allowing e5. You've got it covered with knight takes e5. But you're allowing the possibility of e5 to exist, which is dangerous. Um, there could be a trick, though. Wow. So the trick would be e5, knight e5, ab4, ab4, rook a1. I didn't see this, but you got d4 at the end. Oops. I mean, maybe Sadamasa already saw this, but I just saw it for the first time. It just occurred to me. I mean, maybe that variation cooks it completely. It's a serious problem. Yeah, no, this is a tactical problem. If you don't have that move, you still have a good game, apparently. He played a good move, knight g4. Even this is good. So basically, you know, I wouldn't have realized this, Princess Chess. Not that I would have done it myself, but... It's, it's like apparently too reckless what you're doing. 
I remember this game in a team tournament I played, oh god, like 30 years ago, where there was a similar position. White had a, White had a pleasant advantage all the way. It looks like one of those Hikaru Nakamura um, kind of Queen's Gambit declined variations. The Bishop A6. Maybe this is good. This might be better. But that's the better way to play. Alright, so takes, knight g4, bishop d4. And you better pray that there's nothing on this file here for black. If black has something there, you're done. Black has knight c6. But he just did e5 right away. Whoa. Whoa, silver. How does that work? All right. Deep tactical moment. I guess if worst comes to worst, we can play f4, but I'm not loving it. It's possible that black is a genius. Oh my god. Say what? You played knight a2? You have to be kidding me, right? What? Knight a2? That is a bizarre move. No, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. This is not a move. This is not a move. This is not a move. Even Richard Rapport wouldn't play that move. As much as he loves Knight A2, I just... You can't play that move. I would resign rather than play Knight A2. I refuse to play Knight A2. There's no way I'm playing Knight A2. That's just crazy. I would resign, play Rook C1, um, knight takes d5, bishop e2, no, that doesn't work. Anything, any other move but knight a2 that doesn't lose material immediately. This is the obvious move. Now there is danger here. Rook check, bishop e2, d4, bishop somewhere. I mean, it obviously looks dangerous. But you can't play knight a2. I mean, what the heck? Your poor knight on a2. You might as well just like take it, just take it off the board, put it on the side, give it to your opponent as a present on, on a2. That's just ridiculous. I understand there is danger here, but let's play a rational move, rook c1. How strong is black's attack? That's the question. You got a very scary file. I mean, heck, Ivanchuk would probably win with white after knight e2. I mean, I admit it looks a little scary, like, take, take. I'm not, I'm not real excited here. The other knight wanted to go to a2. This is admittedly a little frightening. What do you mean? Okay, I don't really want to play knight, knight e2. Let's say bishop e2. Are we toast here? Not so clear. Of course, bishop a6, we've got b5 there. It's the d4 that concerns me the most. So apparently it's like very close, according to the computer. Let's like check everything. Queen f6. I was seriously looking at f4, but it looks like bishop f6 was right. Queen f6. Knight a2 is not a move. The computer comes up with knight b5. I mean, this is this is scary, too. You're, you're double attacked on a1. You can't recapture after a, b. You're, like, clearly worse. So it turns out, like, the real mistake was earlier. 
But I mean, Black's movie five is a very, very deep move. It's like a kind of engine sacrifice. I would be suspicious immediately my opponent was using a computer. But apparently he had even better moves here, so probably not. You have no one to blame but yourself, Princess Chess. This is like reckless aggression, this opening setup. And Knight A2 is a horrible blunder. So you're toast now. Queen E5. Bishop A6 is clearly game over. I guess it looks a little hard to come up with a move after that. So you played a recklessly aggressive system. I'm, I'm really tearing Princess Chess down here, but I want you to learn your lesson. Recklessly aggressive type of setup. But then, you know, you played Knight A2. It's like already you're in trouble, though. It looks like here is the last chance. If you come to your senses at this point, you might be able to save the game. I would have played Rook C1. I would have missed Knight B5. Can we save the game here? Yeah, like the computer thinks of salvage. You have a salvage opportunity. Rook a3, queen d2. Is something wrong with queen d2? No, it's, it's a game, man. I mean, this is still a game. He easily could have gone wrong. For me, like, knight a2 is game over. Check, bishop b2. Bishop a6 resigns. Apparently, the engine wants to play this. Oof. Speaking of Ivanchuk, you know, that's like a Jababa move or something. But I, I, you know, I wouldn't have seen that. Any human plays Bishop a6 here. It's just over. So Queen e5, castles. I was expecting castles. How bad is castles? Damn. Too materialistic, Princess Chess. You've got to remember, at the end of the day, you have two connected pass pawns on the queen side. You almost do, but the knight a2 might mess it up. I was seriously thinking this might work. Queen e1, queen e1, rook a1, threatening mate. <laughs> I mean, at least you have a chance here. I'm like trying to grab the piece for like a hundred times. The computer says this is winning for black, but in a practical game, you know, maybe he'll let your pawns sneak through or he'll have to sack a piece to stop the pawns or something. Even that seems better. Okay, no, king f1 is fine. Here, it's probably correct. I'm just kidding around. Let me put it this way. I would consider castling and see if it works. If it doesn't work, okay, then we'll play king f1. Yeah, I mean, you're a pawn up in an endgame. Pawn up in an endgame. not the nicest structure that's a good move h4 you love your rook the number one reason the castle is to develop your rook queen c1 now princess chess is is coming back nice rook play i was doing that in like third grade before I even understood the rules. That's a classic, isn't it, guys? Like the Rook H3. We always wanted to do that. That friend in high school who didn't really know how to play chess, but he always played like A4, Rook A3, Rook E3 every game. Everybody loves that. No, I mean, Black blew it. But your margin for winning here isn't much. I mean, you've only got the A pawn. And it's Is these Isolani over here. <clears throat> you know, it's not like there's a guaranteed win. You're up a pawn in a heavy piece endgame. You gotta be careful. Coordination is key. Rook A2, man. 
That's a cool move. But I would think like it's very likely that some kind of ordinary move like A4 might be good. This is like a, a sort of aesthetic obsession. I thought you were going to triple. But now the pawn needs to be protected. Why not just C6 actually? Pawns should be protected by pawns, and if not, then by knights. Alright, the rook behind the pawn, you're good. I'm half joking around. It's It's been a long year. I don't know, I mean, F4, I, there's no way I'm playing F4. Antony would not play F4. I was having a lesson with, with Antony, one of our viewers. Yeah, I've been trying to get him to, to move his F pawn at all, you know, has been difficult. But he would definitely not play f4. There's no way I'm playing f4. It's like knight a2. My king is, is sacred. You know, I've already played h4. This is a very, very reckless move. I mean, you're a pawn up in the heavy piece endgame. And you've already played h4. There's no way you should weaken yourself. You see, I think Princess Chess is missing the point. You're up a pawn on the queen side. This pawn needs to be, like, pushed and promoted. You're, like, randomly playing for an attack on the king side. Okay, there is a threat here of rook g3. But even, even that can be protected by, like, knight e8. It's a little bit of Astro Bait style. You've got to understand your advantage, really, and use it. Queen g4, d4... Obsession with Direct Attack, Krogius. The best book ever written on chess psychology by the Soviet Grandmaster. The only really good book ever written on chess psychology. He approaches it very scientifically, categorizing, you know, like, psychological weaknesses. Obsession with Direct Attack, like, that's the most common diagnosis of uh, chess um, personality disorder different players have different kind of like personality disorders the most common one you're like playing for mate when you're up a piece and so you lose the game it's ridiculous you're 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 supposed to be like pushing your queenside pawn but instead you're playing for mate over here. Rook e3, queen g4, rook g3, queen g3, knight d5, okay. There's your pawn. Hey, you have an extra pawn over there. That's important, right? Oh yeah. I have a I have a pass pawn on the queen side. You know I want the job. Now we can get we can get the chess doctorship. Chess psychologist. Now that Reuben Fine is dead. But Fine didn't write a great book on chess psychology, even though he was a psychologist. The only good book is Krogius. Leave it to the Soviets. Knight e3, rook d2. Hello. Look, look, you have a check over there. That's fortunate, because otherwise, like, knight f1 would be, would be a bit of a problem. Okay, it was it was Princess Chess in time pressure. This guy has ten minutes. Like what's his deal? Why do you have like one minute left and he's got ten minutes left? That's kinda crazy. Kudos to you for using your time though, and he dropped a piece. What? Not exactly. <sighs> Queen f five, D three check. Rook c5, and it's going through, so that's not good. I think. Well, let's double check. Yeah, you're getting mated. No, no, you can't do that. But now you could take. Maybe not, still. Now maybe you could take. What we have here is a failure to calculate. Queen takes f5, d3 check, king h2, and that's hanging with check.
That was a big blunder. Even with time, Princess Chess would normally see that. Alright, we gotta have a talk about, like, moving pawns in front of your king. You're up a p you're not up a piece, alright. You could be up a piece. Instead you played g4. The f4 move was too much for me, but this one... Maybe we should put you in a treatment program with Antoni. You can counsel each other. He can tell you about how he's afraid to move his kingside pawns, and you could counsel him on, on how he shouldn't be afraid to move his kingside pawns. Um, man, I mean, g4 is like... You've got so many good moves here. Rook c6, what's black going to do? It's over. That's just winning immediately. The knight's hanging. We could take it, but she plays instead g4. I don't like opening up our king, you know. Fortunately, you're probably, possibly still winning. Though it looks like black's blockade is actually pretty decent here. Kucha, you know about the Krogius book? What, well, what, what, uh, I don't think it was misspelled in my book. Oh, on the binding? Really? Do you have the hardcover? I have a hardcover. RHM Press, I think. Um, of Krogius. It's actually really rare. You should hold on to that book. I don't think there's a lot of copies around. Um, That's funny though, the binding. You notice the binding is misprinted. Oh, you have a soft cover? Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. When is it published from? Is it re some republishing? Let me know when that was published. I'm talking about like an original publishing of the, of the hardcover. It's possible they reissued it or something in, in soft cover. This one was probably issued in soft cover though, if it's RHM Press. Yeah, you probably, you might have an original. All right. But I, it's funny, I've never seen it in, in the in the soft cover. Good book, King H7. Coach Ah focuses on the important stuff, like the misspellings in the cover. <laughs> That's vital. Princess just still, still... My god. Your opponent is still hanging on here. You've got a perpetual with h5. Um, man, I mean, you're going to get mated on g2, thanks to playing like f4 and g4. Seriously. You guys think I'm joking or trying to, to shake her tree here? I mean, because Princess Chess has played like f4 and g4 voluntarily, now there's a black knight on e3. And the queen on, on b7 and then e3 are going to like cooperate to make to mate on g2. This didn't have to happen. 1972, Alfred. That's weird. Okay, I don't know that. That's cool. So I have a later publishing than you from the 80s. Late 70s, early 80s. I thought it was RHM Press. You actually have an earlier. You probably have an earlier publishing. I guess. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, white should be winning, but I don't know. Check. G6. Why not F5? Does anyone understand? Is that nothing? Maybe it's nothing. You can just take. Probably white's winning. That's funny just take it well I guess black has a problem but what about like going back I want to see what the Oracle says it's a draw jeez it's a draw princess chess these are the moves that are to blame here 
Okay, we spent too long in this game, guys. I don't have much time left, but... Black black is okay. You know, it's unbelievable. This, this is probably like losing G6. This game is like a lesson in weakening your kingside pawns. First F4, then G4, and now black played G6. And that's it. Probably the final kingside weakening by both sides. H5. Oh, you read the Krugius book in Russian? You like fine better? That's funny. I had the opposite feel. I had totally... I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I had absolutely the opposite feel. I like the Krugius book better. Um... G6, H5. Now it's winning, I assume. You can't withstand that. Too much weakening around the king. Now, is there... Is there a 97 check? Whoops. <laughs> Prince is just, like, panicking in time pressure. We have, we have discovered... Discovered check. You have two minutes here. You have to win the queen to guarantee the win, but you played pawn takes pawn. Now it's like not sure anymore. That's just lucky. Pure luck. You had queen h1. Now you win the queen. Alright. That was a hugely long game. Alright. I've got Warnaki. Um. What was your name now? Somewhat unsound. Swoop. Swas. I forgot. I wrote it down like completely wrong. Somewhat unsound. Ooh, 11. All right. Swas. Princess Chess games always get the longest for some reason. I don't know what that's about. Oh, it was an easy game. Don't spend too much time on this. And it's like I spend an hour analyzing those games every single time. All right. For Nye. Happy 2021. I should have won this, but couldn't find my plan. I take it that you will. Don't assume. Nothing. All right. I drank two American-sized beers, and I feel like I'm... Drunk out of my mind. Wornaki with one inaccuracy? No mistakes and blunders. That must be like phone analysis. How do you have like one inaccuracy? It must have been a big inaccuracy if you've got like 35 cent upon loss. It's kind of funny. It's very rare to see something like that. One inaccuracy, no mistakes and blunders. It would normally be like 20 cent upon loss. Maybe 15. Yeah, I'm waiting for the 90 move game. Can you send it over for next week? It wasn't actually that long, but it was very sophisticated. Kind of complex position. You have a way of doing that, Princess Chess. Um, Wernaki, how do you have just one cent upon loss? I mean, one inaccuracy and 35 cent upon loss here. That's kind of unusual. C4, E6, E3... There's not a lot of independent value when you play E3. Thanks everybody for watching. Happy New Year in advance. It is now 8.27 p.m. here at CET. I guess somewhere it's the New Year already. So Legion Legion thinks the Krogius book is in high scientific quality. Well, it's harder to read. But I studied psychology in college. Maybe that's why I found it, you know, more digestible than most people. Yeah, I read it in English translation, too. Maybe in Russian, it might have been harder. What if you read it in English? Legion, Legion. I mean, if you, you know, what's the next best thing to reading in your native language? Would English be better than Russian? I'm curious. Um... Alright, knight f3, knight f6, bishop e2. This is very passive, but it's alright.
B6 is kind of early. This, this seems strangely familiar. I mean, the problem is, like, this king could be exposed in this diagonal, but I don't think white's setup is, is really dangerous. My preference would be to probably go for B3, bishop B2, and play a kind of reversed hedgehog, a little more dynamic. There's nothing wrong with D4. It's like you're playing black. Princess chess would be ready with the bishop e6, c4 approach. Um, <laughs> basically, you've got the same setup. Yeah, no, I mean, well, normally when you play this type of position, I, I would probably play b3 right away and get a fianchetto. The other option is to go with like d4 and then you're going to put the bishop on d3 but it's not 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 to be like dismissive i mean you're basically playing black but that's can be that can be a good way to play i mean a lot of people like tend to overextend themselves it's okay to play an opening where you're you're playing reverse colors see if there's a hikaru game not surprising to me exchanging is okay i think um so long as black has played b6, I would think this exchange is, even, even without b6, is probably okay. Structurally, this is good for you. There it is, the princess chess defense. Well, I mean, the classic. Princess chess un kind of understood what she was doing. In order to play c4, you have to be able to support it with a b-pawn. Here, black doesn't have the ability to support it properly. You're a tempo up, too. So you just b3. I mean, this is just like the last game, you know, on steroids. What the heck is black going to do after b3? You've got a, a souped up princess chess, princess chess's opponent's position. Just a much, much better version. You're already castled. There's no checks here. Black can't play b5 because he gets it blown up by a4. That's it. Game over. I mean, it's not like literally game over, but I mean, Black's position is pretty much going to get ripped to shreds. They, they can't maintain their pawn structure. Your inaccuracy is not playing b3. That's your one inaccuracy. Yeah, I mean, b3 is extremely strong. What's he going to do? No, after b3, black should probably, like, just take and play a stupid position where where they're slightly worse with an isolated pawn on d5. I'm not even sure which way you should recapture. Maybe with a pawn. I, I think that both recaptures are actually viable. I like that the pawn controls c4, so if he ever tries to stick a knight on c4, it's not happening. You also have the strategic exchange we saw in the last game with with black trying to play bishop a6. You're trying to get your bad bishop out with bishop a3. At the end of the day, you have better you have a better structure. You know, that's the main thing. And white is slightly better. You didn't do b3. You did this. I guess you're still threatening b3, but when you play b3, black will have like bishop b4 hitting your knight and gaining time. So knight c3 is a bad move. It's advantageous for you to still have this knight on b1 in this kind of reverse pan off. The same way it was advantageous for, for the last game, black, to have the knight still on b8. So this is a mistake. I mean, again, we would like to play b3 and destroy that strong point on c4, whatever you want to call it. Is it a strong point? What is it? That advanced pawn on c4 needs to go. It's in my air space. It's getting in my way. It's cramping your style. Attack pawn. And if bishop b4 here, you can just like develop. And you have a great game. Um, very strong position for white. Because the c4 overextended. It's a typical positional mistake. But you don't take advantage. Now he's supporting it to some degree, 
And now you play d4. Alright. The other way of approaching the situation. Quite interesting. Instead of attacking the base of the pawn chain, I mean you're attacking the base of the pawn chain instead of attacking the head of the pawn chain. I didn't get what you were doing when you played queen c2. So it turns out that he's setting up e4. That's a nice idea. Can I ask, are you threatening knight takes d5? Not really. <laughs> That's a funny trick. I was just thinking knight d5, but it doesn't work. You're not really threatening to play knight d5. Um, but you are threatening e4, so black should make an effort here. Development. What is black's best move? I mean, it has to be this, I guess. Securing the e4 square. What are you going to do if black plays bishop b7 now? You better play b3. It's probably not too late. Don't just sit there and let black play a6 and b5 and get rolled on the queen side. You have to be willing to make this move. Alright, so he lets you play e4. Huge bishop now. Back in the game again. Like a good, a good kind of uh, collie system. Other than the fact that this loses a piece, it's a good idea. Strategically, Black, you know, looks he looks stupid for dropping a piece, but his strategic motivation was a good one. Black was trying to control the e4 square, which was a key point in the position. He just overlooked the fact that he's played b6, so queen a4 check, we can no longer do this. There are some weird positions where maybe the queen could get trapped. Here, here, queen b7. The problem is it's getting out on a6, apparently. There doesn't seem to be a way to trap the queen. This is a draw by repetition. But on queen a6... The queen escapes, it, it appears. I mean, still here, like, b5, I wonder. I don't think that black can trap your queen. It's close. Let's see. Yeah, apparently there's a million moves that win. Wow. Not even close. Can't trap the queen. I mean, this is... The only chance is to try to trap your queen for black here. You know, you might have made a mistake there. But check out Warnaki. He's not satisfied with merely winning a piece with check. He's like, no, I'll, I'll up the ante with 95. Didn't he, I didn't even consider it. Oh, this is just analysis. Sorry, that's computer analysis. <laughs> that's computer suggestion. All right, queen a4 check. If knight c6, knight e5. Right. Here, 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 here. Good move, trading pieces. Sometimes acerbate doesn't do this. When you're up a piece, just trade down. Here's an interesting move. Speaking of trading pieces, when you're up a piece, queen d6. I like that. If you trade the queens, there's very little chance of losing. This is a heads-up move. Queens are still on the board. Small chance of blunder in the future. Your techno dumb need advice. Want to paste a good chess link for all on Discord? Um, we have a pub Discord. I haven't done much with it lately. Mr. Coffee's here. What's up, Mr. Coffee? Condolences on your loss. Knight c6, queen a4, bishop f3, bishop f3, knight d4, and it's just too many pieces. Black's just down a rook. But I think in principle it's important. You, you, um, you would rather have the queens off the board, always. There's less chance of messing up. 
but basically a really good game by Warnocky. Again, like seeking exchanges down a clear, I mean up a clear rook. This is a little different from Princess Chess game. A little easier to handle. A little simpler. But you're hesitating now. You should probably start to set up some kind of mating attack. Repeated too many times there, be careful with the threefold repetition. Yeah, that was a little scary. And now he's got the G file. But you never made any other mistakes, that's impressive. This is also a really credible move. I'm surprised, I'm very surprised the computer didn't give you a, a, a inaccuracy for rook takes e6. You're voluntarily giving up the exchange here. Um, you're up a rook. You would think like the computer would criticize that move. But he's got threats of this and this. He gives back material. And that's a very good practical decision. So this was very much like an, an optimal game, except for not playing b3. A few too many checks where where Wernaki was unsure, and he repeated position, but that's really not a problem. In the Endgame book, uh, Sharashevsky talks about the most important rule in the Endgame is not rushing, and I think that's something we can we can push into not only the end game but other stages doing things like repeating three moves you know repeating twice to to gain time on the clock being patient ah oh, here we go again i give f4 i give f4 a dubious i'm so, i mean like an inaccuracy this is like princess chess this is very, very similar, basically the same thing. There's no way I'm playing f4 and weakening my king's side because there's like a 0 .00001 chance that playing f4 will lead to your demise. There's absolutely no reason to play that move. I will not weaken my king's side under any circumstances in this position. So, I don't like f4, you know. Any kind of move that weakens your king side and, and makes it like you know, one ten thousandth of a chance that you're going to get checkmated. Do not play f4 here and weaken your king side. Look at the danger. That could be fatal under normal circumstances. And he blundered, you know. You lost on time. Probably you wouldn't have lost on time if you hadn't played f4 and like freaked out but simply like rook here with the, with the idea of trading queens stay guided by your plan to trade pieces down there doesn't seem to be a way to trade rooks so then trade something else you know trade trade the queens with rook d1 yeah I don't know what the time control it was 10 0 but you know, there's no reason to play f4 you're still winning but you kind of freaked out and lost on time all right, that's where I can. We got two games left. Swas and and move eleven. Thanks to everybody for supporting us. Over the course of the year, we've got a new year starting tomorrow. I will be back at some point tomorrow morning with a New Year's Day stream. Hopefully starting at eleven o'clock. But you never know how bad my hangover will be tonight. So happy New Year to everybody. Thanks for supporting the stream. Good to see you, Mr. Coffee and JCS here. We've got two last games to go over. So Swuss is next. Somewhat unsound. If there's time today. Alright, let's see what this is. Somewhat unsound playing the black bits. The Astrobate defense. <laughs> Oh, I am so playing tomorrow if there's a hangover involved. I don't know. I had two beers. I didn't eat enough. I, I still have to eat my New Year's Eve dinner. I'm, I'm a little hungry. No food to absorb those beers. E4, C5, Knight of 3, G6, dubious. What is this, phone analysis? Someone on sound must have had the game analyzed by, by Nokia. I don't think the G6 gets a dubious. 
under normal circumstances. That seems a little excessive. I normally don't get a dubious there. Oh, that's your desktop. Damn. It's either too powerful or not powerful enough. I'm not sure which one. Um, G3, though, that's funny. That's that's a weak move. Kings in the attack doesn't offer white a lot. Knight C6, Bishop G2, Bishop G7. I actually like... I think I like maybe the knight on E2 better. Playing like a reverse closed Sicilian to the King's Indian attack. Now C3. Hey, this is like a weird move order. I said this with Dvoratsky. Mark always recommended that we work on this E5 line. And so that's what I play now. Exclusively. Um... But there are many different ways of treating this King's Indian attack. It is kind of a bit of a weird move order by White. So maybe, you know, someone on sounds here D5 is, is an interesting try. I would also imagine you could simply play like Knight F6. It's probably a decent move. That's about it, though. You know, I don't like E6, because now White gets in D4. Looks like he has a reasonable game. It's either E5, Knight F6... Or d5. Even d6 seems like an inaccuracy. d5 is interesting though. White doesn't have e5. He could play something simple like this though. The problem here is someone on sound is is your play consistent with your play with white? Do you realize you're playing the white side of a Fianchetto King's Indian? Is that consistent for you? Do you play the white side of the Fianchetto King's Indian? I mean, I'm not sure about this end game. But I definitely know that someone on sound doesn't really like end games, first of all. Probably this is actually the best way for you to play with the black pieces in this example. You know. But just theoretically, I'm not sure you should be playing an opening with black, a tempo down, that you don't play with white. You know? So d5 leads to a king's indian. I think for you, it would make more sense. Well, again, maybe that's all right. Yeah, you'll have to either go into that end game, or you're going to play knight f6 here. Knight f6 is interesting. You can learn to play e5, which is what I play. You are really blocking the, the long diagonal. It's it's a it's a it's a botanic type of system, but it's good. You have to just accept, you know, give squares to get squares, according to Bobby Fischer. We're making a concession to get other gains. Yes, our bishop is blocked. Um, but that's what I prefer. Okay, d5, he plays this. White gives up the center. Keep in mind, you know, you're playing black, so you can only be so aggressive. That, that extra tempo may, may burn you. White should probably go for d4 quick here. And we have what looks like a Fianchetto c3 Sicilian. There was a player, Rosenthalis, who was famed for playing the c3 Sicilian with, with the Fianchetto. Um, he is, he's not a young grandmaster anymore. He's still around somewhere. But I would think instead of queen d8, you might be able to retreat your queen to a different square. d6. I mean, obviously, like, d6 is going to get hit by knight a3, knight c4, knight b5. How about d7? This is also problematic on the long diagonal. I mean, it may be shown that you, you play too aggressively. I'm not sure. Okay, let's, let's give you queen d8. Maybe it's a mistake. I'm biased by your... By your phone's analysis here. I mean desktop. Rookie one. Knight f6. This is a... I give up. How can we play d3? Like rookie one maybe, but you can't play d3. Move 11, it's cool. Um, 
I mean, the whole point is, like, White is trying to blast it open with D4 and exploit his lead in development. You know, D3 is like, forget about it. Why even bother? That's just lame. I mean, there was a question whether someone on Sound's play was, was valid or not, and the guy freaking plays D3. You gotta try this, I guess, D4, but maybe you can play with the move order. Maybe White can play, like, Knight A3 some kind of like preparation way to play d4 okay I guess he was afraid of the isolated pawn you know here essentially there's no way that white is worse in this position even if you give him an isolated pawn like this variation is is plus plus point seven cd4 Right, the bishop is a monster, and he's got the open half open e file. But d3 is is it's disgusting. So it's not like you know, and, and he has to do it. If he doesn't do it, he's going to be worse. It's not a question of like being, well, this is the best move. You know, I've got to do d4. It's a question of if you don't do d4, you're not going to be equal. You're going to be worse because you're going to be tied down on the file to that pawn on d3. He has no choice. It's like either be better or be worse. There's nothing in the middle. After d3, it's like totally lame for white. Slowly, you'll play b6, and it's going to look like some kind of bad king's Indian for white. Castle. Yeah, and this is just like a totally random move. Bishop g5 is just random. But I already don't love his position. It's a standard kind of Fianchetto, Kings in the end. It's not that bad. I mean, I guess knight a3, something like knight a3, knight c4, and a4. It's it's still okay for white, maybe. You know, maybe even bishop e3, like attacking your c5 pawn and playing d4, admitting he made a mistake. That's still not that bad. Truthfully, he can still equalize. It's not too late. This is a stupid move. Now, queen c7, can you play b6? That's what I'm interested in. It's probably d too dangerous on the long diagonal. He'll have d4 again. He'll actually come to his senses and realize, hey, I should play d4. If you had time for b6, it would be a good move. Happy New Year, Uber driver. We're just doing our last, uh, last two games here. Basically, someone of sound, if you can counter his fianchetto, you're better. If you could get in b6, I would play it, but I don't know if it works. It looks like the diagonal. You know, I would love to see this happen, where you sack the exchange. But I'm not sure this guy's going to let you do that. I mean, this actually looks really dynamic, for example. But I'm afraid if you play b6, he has something else. d4. Yeah. If you had an extra move, that's the way we would want to develop. But no. Ugh. This is disgusting. Never, ever, ever put your queen on c7 in the king's Indian. It's not the old Indian. You don't put your queen on a square. You put the queen on maybe e2, but you never put it on c2. It has nothing to do there. It's stupid. This is a terrible square for the queen. Plus, he's like getting self-pinned by c4. Check out his opponent's statistics. 12 inaccuracies. One blunder. No mistakes. Okay, this, this looks like a good move, though. Man, bishop e6 is like begging for a positional exchange sacrifice. Like, please sacrifice the exchange, dude. I bet he can do this, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if Morozevich would play like rook takes e6. I remember I had a game with, with a very positional player. Um, a good positional player. Ronald Burnett one time where he did like rook takes e3 against me didn't even get a pawn for it but it so disrupts your position and you have so crappy control of the white squares 
There's no way I'm even letting him do this. Computer still thinks it's not enough, but it's close. Half a pawn compensation. You need half a pawn. It almost works. So I don't think I like e6. It looks like bishop d7. You should probably place the bishop on d7. Here is awkward. You see, the thing is, he's slowly going to Bafinik land, you know? I did the series on chess lecture called Bafinik on Space Advantage. And once it happens, once it sets in, it's over. Like, you got c5, you play h6, you take away that square, you have the dominant control of d4, the guy's just drifting. He's just drifting into Deathville, you know, where it's like, he's just worse. He at least stopped, he stopped h6, but, but the, the, the situation here with the rook on d8, that doesn't look right. Yeah, and this is a good move. I likes me some bishop c8. Now it's like perfect. You can correct your position. He did get to trade the bishops off. That's at least something. Trading pieces is good when you have less space. So bishop h6 was a good find. Here, alright. And that 4 alright, he's trying to get his bishop in the game. So he's fighting back. Knight f6 is a bizarre move. Kind of bizarre move. I understand his knight on e4 is strong, but it feels like there's got to be another way to do this. I think h6. h6 with the idea of f5 and e5. Maybe. But I mean, this really hurts your pawn structure. You're devaluing your pawn structure slightly. Now your extra pawn on the king side is like meaningless in a lot of end games. You know? I mean, the point is like if you win his d3 pawn now at some later time in an end game, you, you may not be able to win, you know, because your king side pawn structure is de devalued. So that's the problem there. You definitely don't want to trade down. You're not looking for an endgame win. King f2, it's a magnetic attraction to the center. <laughs> King f2 is bizarre. He's like, I want to make sure my queen's protected. The number one most important thing in chess is king safety. You guys, you heard it here first. It's the one thing, it's the one theme that, that most commonly decides games. The single most important thing. No, it's not development, it's not control the center, it's not, you know, it's king safety. Your king has to be safe. Or you lose, you get checkmated. King f2 is like mental, like why are you moving your king to the center when the queens are on the board? This is a very strange move. Let's get our king a little closer, just in case I might get mated. Or something like that. You know, it's the next best thing to playing f4. First I'll play f4, then I'll play king f2. I, I like me the Dutch when I play f5 and king f7. <laughs> it's crazy. Why is this guy putting his king on f2 for no reason? You know, he's thinking, someone that sounds going to trade queens. He obviously doesn't know his opponent too well. The guy who's like allergic, he's like, in case black trades queens, I'll have my king a little closer to the center. That's not happening, dude. I can tell you right now. The one guy least likely to trade queens against you is your opponent, unfortunately. I thought maybe like, it's kind of ironic though. I played so many games with someone on sound, he will never trade queens. This guy's like, oh yeah, let's think optimistically. In case he trades queens, I have my king in the center. Total misconception. How about the end game with tripled pawns? So basically, like, f5 loses a piece. It almost loses a piece, or it, it definitely loses a piece. It definitely loses a piece. Poor guy. 
like F5. WJ Lou, thanks for the donation. 500 bits for the new year. Greetings, chess happy people. Chess happy. I am chess happy. You said chess people happy new year. But I'm I'm chess happy. Um yeah, I've seen the chess personality test. We did that once. Thanks, WJ Loof. I gotta get out of here, guys. One more game and it's time for dinner. I'm starving. This was funny, Mr. Mr. Swuss. Oops. You do win a piece. <laughs> I mean, this guy did it to himself with f4, king f2, and f5. You didn't beat him, he beat himself. I mean, you played sensibly. You gave him the chance to beat himself, and he did. Congratulations. Okay. Move 11, last game. If there's time, there's time. This is the last game. There's not much time. I'm so hungry. I'm going to eat my pencil. But. Happy New Year. Almost. Three hours to go. All right, someone on sound will see you in the New Year. Reverse Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6, castle, okay. d3, old school. This is something I play with white myself, and we've talked about this with someone on, I mean, excuse me, with move 11. Uh, a3 is the theoretical modern move, but d3 is more old school. I had a game with this a couple months ago. I got a good game, couldn't win it. Lead poisoning, it's actually a pencil, sorry to mislead you. I just couldn't formulate the word. So pen, pencil, it's actually a pen. I said pencil, don't worry about lead poisoning. Anyway, it's graphite. Yeah, you reminded me of something. I had long forgotten. Chess Smurf 64 just donated a tier one set of troll in a roll. It's good to have troll back for the new year. D3, castle, A3. So we transpose. Now rookie A, solid move. I mean, I played the dragon with black in the classical variation. Rookie one is a system. Basically, move 11 is playing like a reverse classical dragon. It's better as a defense than it is as an attack. I will say that about this whole system that move 11 is playing. What is a lame kind of attack for white is essentially a pretty good defense, a pretty active defense for black. B4. Bishop f8, and then bishop e2. This is correct. Move 11, you had this You had this very similar variation once before where you played a6. Now, you've played a little more theoretically here. But a surprising move from move 11 now. I'm biased by the opening explorer, of course. But I believe in moving forward. I learned that from studying Alyekin's games. If you study Alyekin's games, the pieces just boop, they just go out. Like they never come back. They don't retreat. Once they go out, they don't retreat. Move 11, also, they're very efficient. Move 11's not retreating, but he's moving the same piece twice with 95. It's very early in the opening to play that move. This is what? Move 11? Of course, move 11. That's why it was an unusual move. Move 11 playing move 11. But Coach A is right. Like, probably we'll use the F-pawn. Although that's not 100% Coach A. There's still some positions where we might not move the F-pawn. I'm biased by A5. The other move is Bishop G4, though. I like this move, you know. I mean, I played the classical dragon a little bit with white experimentally. And I've also faced it as black. It makes me uncomfortable. You know, h3 is a not necessarily a, a... It's not necessarily a good move. h3 is not always... It's like not always... Um, actually, not always a constructive move. So I like bishop g4. We'll try to provoke... We're heading over here. We're hoping to provoke white to play the grob. 
my personal favorite opening. Grobbing good. Um, but the grob, the grob not recommended, you know, in general. My least favorite unusual opening. Um, he, he probably won't cooperate and play voluntarily a grob with G4, but we, we can always hope for the best. But maybe, you know, eventually F6, Bishop F7, it will kick back to this diagonal. Um, Legion Legion got a gift sub as well. Chess Smurf, very generous of you. Lots of gift subs for the new year. It's the third one today. I'm falling asleep and dying of hunger, so I'm going to wrap up this last game. Anyway, Knight D5 feels wrong. Um, that's what I was talking about Astrobate, with Astrobate today. Um, was it Astrobate? No, someone else. One of my students, I was having this discussion recently. I'm a very intuitive player. I'm kind of 50% intuition and 50% calculation. But I have 30 plus years of intuition to, to draw upon. And obviously it's hard to teach intuition, if not impossible. It's hard to teach people intuition. But this move feels like we still have pieces yet to develop. So we shouldn't be moving the knight again. In general, it's not a bad exchange. In a sense, it's your worst piece. Your worst of your minor pieces. But remember, when you play knight d5, you're also opening up his bishop on b2. You've got to remember that his knight on c3 is not really well placed. I think it's an interesting question. While this move maybe works tactically, because you have like knight e5, rook e5, obviously, no tricks. Wait a minute. Am I missing something here? Well, you mean it just loses tactically? You play knight d5, he has knight d5, queen d5, knight d5. Oh my god. Move 11, what have you done? It took me... It took my my myself like three minutes to see this doesn't work. Whoops. Are you planning on sacrificing your queen? <laughs> so it just doesn't work. All right. There is a reason why ninety five is not a move. I saw it without the help of the engine. It is kind of. I am kind of tired though. I would normally have spotted that a little more quickly. There was this red alarm going off, but I thought it was just like a positional mistake. <laughs> it loses a pawn. Oops. So I like bishop g four. You're very very fortunate. He didn't see it. White should be ashamed of himself. It's a pretty obvious tactic, man. I mean, discover it on this pawn here. He's got the perfect setup. Trading off his block blocker. Blocker knight. Queen b3. Alright, knight takes. And then here, I'm not sure. You know, I don't like... I don't know. I don't know if I like queen takes. Queen is more exposed there. Bishop takes with the idea of queen b2 seems more natural for me. He plays this. I mean, here you're being a little paranoid, perhaps. He played f6. It's not a bad move, but your g7 is already protected. It's possible you could play something more aggressive like this, going back to the old bishop g4. I'm, I'm getting kind of paranoid about f-pawn moves today. f6 slightly weakening the king's side. I mean, the other nice thing about bishop g4, it develops a piece. Um, it doesn't weaken your structure at all. White might have b5, though. You can always play knight d4. That's part of the idea, right? you got massive pressure on e2. So knight d4, pawn d4, queen d4. This is hanging. It's complicated. I mean, both sides have pawns hanging. Crowdfunded. Maybe now a6, your favorite move a6 is, is worth considering. Physically stopping b5. I would definitely consider it. All right, this makes some sense. I'm concerned about the c file here. Right. His other rook could be a possibility. Now he's starting b5. Did I miss something?
I don't understand. Like, what's up with, with C7? What did I miss here? Why is white not playing b5? I mean, your whole point is that this is attacked. What do you do? Knight d4? This is just dropping. Knight d4. So this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. I don't get it. Move 11 made no effort to defend against the threat on the c file. And white just misses it. First he plays like that other move. This must have been like a pre-move. He thought his queen was attacked. He thought his queen was still on b3. So that's that's the second mistake. I mean, isn't white just playing b5 here? Am I missing something? No. It's two, two blatant mistakes. b5, 97. No, that's two blatant mistakes. I mean, it's still in the position. Both sides must be playing too fast in a blitz game. It's 60 plus 5. What is that? Time control 60 plus 5? Are you kidding me? 60 what? Milliseconds? Rated blitz game. What does that mean? 60 plus 5. One. 60 seconds? Ah. Oh. So it's like one minute plus five? Oh, no wonder it was such bad tactical mistakes. The time control is too fast. Both sides are making stupid mistakes. I mean, you're just, you're all over B5 a hundred times. He missed B5 again and again. I mean, I think he should trade, trade pieces. Thank you. Trade queens. Now. Unless he has b5. He has b5 again. What if we do it again? Do it again, Sam. It's not quite as good as it was because the b5 pawn is hanging. <laughs> we still have b5 here. It's too late for b5. Unfortunately. Bishops are stronger than knights. But you have to say five lever on the queen side. This is a complicated position. A white might also have e4, maybe even sacrificing the d3 pawn. But this time control isn't very useful. Rook c2. Yeah, you're like passive and slightly worse now. Okay, a5 is a good move. You better play a5. Break up his structure. This is a very good move. King move, good. King centralization acerbate in the end game. Now move 11. I mean, there's also the exchange sacrifice here, but it's not enough. King, king, king. King Kong. Knight e4 might be a reasonable move. In blitz, I would play king e6. White should probably think about sometimes playing e4. And it's a rook ending. This is a little bit weak. He can guard his base. All rooking games are draws. Now it's definitely a draw. Oh. Maybe not. It's still a draw. I'm not expecting too much from this end game, but it looks like now it's not a draw anymore. Yeah, maybe it's still a draw. You know, this this looks like tremendous king position with king d5 here. This should be a draw. Four against four. Black slightly better with the outside pawn though. It's it's not fun for white. Only move. But it's it's likely that with perfect play white draws here. What's the engine? 
yeah, point, point 0.5. Not as bad as I thought. I thought white would even be worse. It's still a draw. He wants to stay active, get 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 the rook behind the pass pawn, keep his king centralized, play for like g4, h5 or something. Oops. Yeah, there's no rook b5 there. It's still a draw, I guess. The white king is very strong now. It almost feels like black now should be like bailing out. I mean, white's rook is so active and the king is so active we can lose. We definitely want to think about maybe at the, we're getting to the point where now white is better. And then we're looking for a, a point where we want to just bail out and try to not lose. I mean, what happened here? Black is better, black is better. You know, I preferred this move, not taking the pawn and playing king d5 with a monster king, frankly. I know that he can play a4. I mean, you're still clearly better. But you're also allowing a trade of pawns, which gets them a little closer to a draw, maybe. But I guess the move c5 may not have been that great. Maybe, maybe actually b4 is a mistake. Because you have a protected pass pawn on b5, it's a huge asset. Maybe you should be more careful about when to push that pawn. It's probably objectively a draw though, but something happened here. All of a sudden, I guess you should be very, very careful. Maybe rook a6 or something. So as not to get checked back. Now the white king is just too strong. You know, you're in danger of losing. There's a tool module called intuition training. Oh, that's cool. I'll check it out. Check here. Rook a5. Now white is better. Huh? What? Okay, so king c5. I mean, we gotta play king c5. Apparently it's still a draw, but black has to be very careful. Instead he played this. Not a good idea. Letting that black king up. And now black has like rook check and b3 and oh my god. No, you have rook check here. Forcing his king out to b5. And what the heck is going on after that? Now black has two connected pass pawns. This might even be winning for black. After b3, he's just hanging on by a thread. Maybe white can hang on by a thread here, I would guess. But this actually looks like a serious mistake. You lose again, your, your protected pass pawn status is gone after that. That changes everything. Not having a protected passer, now he's okay. While your king side is like going away. And finally your structure is is kind of shot. Flintstone Shubal Morphine. I'd like some right now. I'm gonna go get some. Alright guys, thanks for the games, thanks for supporting the stream over the course of the year. We're going to be back with a, with a new stream tomorrow morning, in the new year hopefully. Thanks Move 11, interesting game, a little fast on the time control there. I think, um, you know, the Rook end game was, was butchered, but you're playing a one minute game, so we're not expecting too much. Thanks everybody, have a great new year, thanks all for supporting the stream. For the donations and subscriptions, Mr. Coffee, JCS for being moderators. Good 2021 to everybody, and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow at 11 CET with the first stream of 2021. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.